Hey guys, this is Nettie with Rocket Powered Sound, and in this video, I'm gonna show you four sound design tricks that Flume uses to hook you into his music. So to demonstrate these tips and tricks, I'm gonna be using the Future Bundle from Rocket Powered Sound, as you can see here. So the Future Bundle is a sizable collection of 1,015 samples and vital presets that'll make your music sound amazing. You've got a lot of very pretty vital presets, granular synths, uh, punchy drums, and just complex pads, just to name a few. So that said, let's get into the first tip, which is using rhythmic grains, is what I'm going to call it. So essentially what this is, is taking like a very complex arrangement of like notes and then chopping it up rhythmically to get like a really cool, like chaotic, but like understandable, uh, like in understandable rhythm. So uh, this is what it sounds like right now. So um, what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna turn off this layer here. So we just have this, like a blank canvas to work with basically. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get like a, we could get like a vital preset from, um, from the future bundle. And um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna spam random notes that are in key with, um, with what we've got here. So let's use this one, um, transpiz. So, um, what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna go over here to like a blank area, and we're just gonna spam random notes. We're in D minor, so let's just set the scale to D minor. Um, and then like literally just do this, just random notes. Now I'm gonna take out some notes that I, I don't want, because there's some that are just gonna be a little bit unstable um, when, when you do this. So um, first off, um, I want this to be a little bit shorter, so I'm gonna just like select everything and then half it in length. Um, and then um, we're gonna, I'm gonna take out the four of, of uh, a, a, the uh, D minor scale. So that's um, uh, B flat here. I'm just gonna lower that a uh, semitone. And then I'm gonna take yeah, this should be good. So now we've got this like absolute chaos going, right? Now if we take the, maybe we could take the like reverb dry wet um, here and just like turn it all the way up. Like that, nice. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna record this to audio. So let's do that real quick. Okay, and now what we can do is we can uh, take this over here to the blank space that we have. Um, first off, that sounds really cool. As is, but we want to make it like a bit more, um, bit more rhythmic and um, and like distinguishable, right? So um, we could just like just do this. Like we could just. So what we're gonna do is like just just chop it up, right? So just move it to the start. And then just take like random sections and just loop it like this. So I'm just hitting Control D to duplicate like the section that I selected. Uh, and let's hear what this sounds like. That's pretty cool. Um, and we can make that like follow the chord progression as well. So we've got like this this like um, we've got this, like three beats right here of um, or three eighth notes of this one chord. So we could just like move this around. Uh, and the way I'm doing this, by the way, is holding uh, if you're on Windows and on Ableton. Control Shift Alt, and then you can like drag it around like this. Yeah, like. So this is a little bit messy because we have some like low end in there that we don't really want. So now we have that. Um, we could also just add like a little auto pan on top of that just to make it hover and then you don't hear like the individual clicks, but that's just up to taste. So this is what that sounds like. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, uh, so yeah, that's using uh, like rhythmic grains to like make a cool sort of uh, flume-esque sound. So let's move on to tip number two. And so tip number two is to use just only like straight major or minor chords. So what I mean by that is I've noticed with a lot of Flume's music, um, you really don't get like 
um, any like really like complex chords. It's usually very basic. So um, let's just get like a uh, vital preset real quick from uh, the future bundle. And um, let's just get, I mean, we can just get a, like keys again, just like see, see what we got. Perfect. Um, <laughs> uh, so what we could do is, um, I'll just like duplicate this. So this is just for reference, this is what uh, we're, or yeah. So just for reference, this is what we're working with, right? The blank canvas. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just like take the MIDI from the, uh, like little keys we have here and now i'm gonna just um make some chords out of this but i'm just gonna make like straight um major and or minor chords so if we uh we're in d minor so if we transpose this down to the root note we're starting off on the d root note so sounds like that um now if we just like take all these drag them like, like up like two intervals like each, then you get, you, it'll automatically like kind of make it major or minor chords. Like if I turn off this mode, um, we've got a minor chord here, another minor chord here, another minor chord here, and then a major chord. So it automatically like puts it in, in, uh, in key so we don't have to worry about anything uh, being out of key. Um, so if we take a listen to this, um, you'll probably hear that it's gonna have, like this is, this is just like how Flume likes to just make his chords like you won't you won't see him add anything else. So let me play this back for you. So yeah, um, if we start adding like extra notes, you'll see you'll kind of get what I mean by this. Um, so if we start adding like like a like a seventh. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll hear it sounds less Flume-esque for whatever reason. Um, so yeah, let me play this back for you. Like, it, it has, I, I do like it, but it doesn't sound as much as like Flume, right? And so like, if you're into that Flume sound, then you're gonna wanna, um, kind of stick to your, uh, stick to your guns with, um, you know, using just straight mi major or minor chords. So yeah, um, that was tip number two. So onto tip number three, which is uh, adding a single note drum. So I already did this in this project, uh, just as is. So I'll just turn this back on, uh, which what we what we had in the um, the project already. So I have this little like constant drone going. So this is the, this is a preset from the future bundle as well, uh, called a radiator plume, and I just turned off this. Um, little oscillator thingy here, um, and that, that gave me this. Um, so I've got it just playing like a single note. Um, I put a little vibrato on it because I, I tend to notice that, um, and it already the preset already came with like a, a vibrato, but I wanted to emphasize it a bit more. But yeah, I noticed that Flume likes to add these like little like singular drones just to like tie everything together basically. Um, like you could have just an absolute chaotic sound going on but if you add this like little drone then you kind of get a, a sense of like stability over over top of your drop um and so yeah that's one thing that flume likes to do a lot um so if i just turn this up so you can hear it a bit better it's just sitting there but it adds such a such a nice like quality and without it it sounds like this It's a lot more empty, right? This just adds that like almost like spaceship like feel to it. So um, yeah, that's a really cool thing that I that I've noticed uh, Flume does a lot. Um, so then that takes us to tip number four. Tip number four, uh, which is uh, putting stabs in a sampler and then like playing with the sample length. So. Um, let's get like a sample from um, the uh, future bundle here. So we have these like um, uh, like granular shots, I think um, is what I'm thinking of. So 
they're all these like they're all these like melodic like one shots and they're they're really cool for what we're about to do so we're gonna just take one um that preferably has like a bit of a transient to it so it's like kind of stabby um and then we're gonna just throw it into a sampler so this would be good for it i think um so first off let's pitch that down to semitones so we're in key And then let's get this on time. Um, so what we're gonna do is, so right now it's a simpler, so we're gonna, we could just right click this and then click simpler, like convert it to a sampler. Uh, and so now we have a sampler. Um, turn off snap real quick so that this is like a bit more accurate. And then what we can do is you can change like, there's like a little parameter here, it's called sample end. And if you put this mode on like this, this sustain mode right here, um, or uh, sorry, loop end is uh, what I meant to refer to. Um, you have this like you have a control over how like fast it repeats so if i if i if i just play this back and hold down the button and drag this you get this like really cool like sound right that that just like constantly modulates so what we can do um, we can go kind of crazy with this and again, we're going to record something to audio. So we're going to make a new audio channel and then uh, take the audio from the sampler, um, arm it for recording, or both for recording actually. And then what we're going to do is uh, hit record and we're just going to like hold down, hold down uh, the, the button to like trigger the sample. And then we're just going to play with the uh, loop end and just, just keep like, like getting these like crazy granular sounds uh, coming from it. So let's do that. So we have just like a long selection of sounds now. I changed the octaves like a couple times during it just so we have some like variation. Um, but yeah, we have this. So uh, yeah, lots of lots of cool little snippets. So now what we could do is we could turn off this little thing uh, real quick so we have a blank slate again. Um, and then we're just gonna toss this in and just like see see what we can uh, do We could just like take anything that's that like kind of sounds like it might have a rhythm to it and just like just like plop it in So let's uh, let's play it back Ooh, I like this little part right here, so And maybe we can like pitch it around. Instant flume right there, and then just cut this out. So yeah, like you you can you can get like a really cool like result just by like dragging around those like samples. You get like a super like stuttery effect, which I think uh, flume is like very well known for. Um, and uh, yeah, like very cool results that way by just like dra dragging things into the sampler. And there's like so many other like parameters that you can change, tweak as well in the sampler um, that will also give you cool results. But yeah, those are my four sound design tips and tricks that uh, Flume uses to hook you into his songs. So remember to check out the future bundle and uh, I'll see you guys in another video. Bye bye.